Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Adam Ratliff with Adam So Fun, and I'm glad you're joining me today. Today I am going to do another loading video. We're gonna load the burrito method, but instead of loading with pins like I did in the last burrito method video, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch it, if, especially if you're a pin user. Um, I It's the way I like to load my frame. I feel like it's a little bit easier and um, definitely better on the back. But today we are gonna use red snappers. Um, a lot of people who had seen the video or have been in my classes asked me, you know, will you please make this video, make us a video with the red snappers, how you do it. And so I'm home, I have time to do it and that's what we're gonna do. Um, a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Um, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I try to put out a video once a week and then you will be able to see them. And if you hit the bell icon, you will get um, notified anytime those videos come out. So you won't miss any of the new stuff. Also, follow me on Facebook and Instagram. It's Adam So Fun, And remember that's S-E-W. And uh, I put a lot of tips and tricks, projects I'm working on uh, that and content that doesn't make it to the YouTube channel on those social media platforms. And you can always send me um, messages through Facebook and Instagram if you're having issues. Uh, I, I'm, I love to help. I don't always get back as like quick because I do teach and things, but I get back to you as soon as I can. Um, so red snappers, what are red snappers? Red snappers are a loading system that helps you load the quilt, but doesn't use any pins. It uses these, um, these clamps and this bar and this bar sits in the um the hem of your uh of your leader so i have a bar in uh my belly bar or i have uh, one of these bars in my belly bar leader right now um this one i took out of the top bar so i could show it off and show you what's going on but um it's in sections so the sections are about this long you screw them together when you get them and then they slide in now some people will um create and stitch a smaller groove that only this can fit in you're welcome to do that I don't do that because I don't always use the snappers although they're in my um, leaders sometimes I want to pin I feel like pinning is gonna be more accurate because you're you're pinning it you're putting it exactly where you want where this is more like you're eyeballing it and then um, how these work I guess I'll just go there um, I have this bar it's in my leader I'm gonna put my quilt on top of that. So it's gonna be um, the bar, leader, quilt top, or backing, or whatever, my fabric. And then this piece comes, and we're gonna clamp it and clamp them all together. So this is gonna squish around, if this is the bar, it's gonna squish around and hold all those layers. It holds it really tight. I mean, it's not going anywhere. Um, and even without the fabric, I mean, this is, not super tight on here like I can slide it around really hard to slide if it's on um, if once it has all the layers in there um, but this will hold everything in place when you're done you just lift up and pop it back it's a super time saver um, I realize that when I load with pins it takes me like two hours because I find loading kind of um, therapeutic is the wrong word but um, it's like my Zen moment and I like kind of sing around with sing with the radio and you know kind of go off to La La Land while I'm doing that and I was like oh my gosh a king quilt would take me like two hours just because I was off in my own world doing something else um, I could really load a king quilt maybe 20 minutes with these if if even that uh, because you're just throwing everything up throwing everything on and clamping it now I'm a presser so I have I would have already pressed my backing I would have trimmed things up because I like a straight edge um, and then I go and load it but it's super quick and that's what we're gonna be doing in the video today um, I'll also give you some tricks uh, you know like everything there is a pro and a con the pro to these super fast you can load those quilts really quick uh, a few cons it's gonna add a lot of bulk and we'll talk about it whenever we actually get it loaded um, but it adds bulk because now we have this big piece of plastic that's getting rolled up with our quilt we have this piece of plastic that's getting rolled up with our quilt um, and then you know it just makes a lot a lot of bulk on those bars the other thing is especially when these are new they're really tight to clamp onto those onto, onto the um, pieces and when you add that fabric super super hard and right now like I can 
pop this on and press against this table, but you can't do that. We don't want to press against the bars on our uh, long arms because we don't want to bend those bars. So um, you almost have to reach around and grab and squeeze it. And because of that, some people tend to find it a little hard to uh, find them a little hard to use because they can't actually get it clamped on. One of the secrets is there's this groove in the center, which is the groove that's going to hold everything. If you bend this back, it opens that groove up. Let's see. It opens this groove up. So now, like, I can barely get my finger in here. This, I can, like, totally opens up. So I could open it up and just kind of bend it back and slide it on. And then it goes on nice and easy. And then when I pull it off, I can bend it back. Same thing, it will pop right off. Um, these are really sturdy plastic, so they're not going to break. Um, there's another brand out there, Leader Grips, and um, I don't believe you can bend them back and forth. I think the Leader Grips are easier to use, but they can break. Uh, Red Snappers are harder to use, but they don't break. Um, I have friends who have Leader Grips. I have friends who have Red Snappers. Everybody likes what they like, you know, ask around, ask people you might know, send me a message and I can tell you about these. But um, if you have, if you're like, oh, maybe I want the other ones, um, I might be able to find someone who has them that you can talk to. Um, and today we're going to be loading up a dream big. I'm doing another one. This is the emerald color. Um, I've already picked out my thread. We're using Magnifico th this time. I always use Omni. If you're a fan of the channel, you know that Omni is my favorite thread. So this is my first time that I'm using something else. So I'm super excited about that. Um, batting wise, um, I'm using Quilter's Dream. I always use Quilter's Dream batting. Today I'm actually using this Quilter's gr uh, Dream Green. This is made out of recycled um, water bottles. So I'm kind of excited. You have to be careful because it has a green tint um, that you don't use it on something that's white because it will, it will leave kind of a green tint. Um, but I was like, this is the perfect chance to do it. So this is the, um, and this is just a poly, you know. Um, this is going to be a wall hanging. A polyester is going to be fine. It's actually going to hold the shape a little better. And then this is called uh, Dream Puff. So these are the same size cuts. Actually, the green is a little bit of a bigger si a bigger cut. But you can see how much big or how much fluffier this is. This would be like an equivalent to a wool. But again, it's a wall hanging, so I'm not going to use a super expensive wool when I can throw some just um, fluffy polyester in there. Um, so I'm going to rearrange the cameras. Oops, I'm making a mess. I'm going to rearrange the cameras and bring you in so we can start loading this, the burrito method, but with red snappers. I'll see you in a second. All right, so I hope you can see everything okay. I hope you can see me. I wonder if I can look at my watch and see what you see. It's cutting off my head a little bit, but I'm okay with that. So um, we're going to load this up. So first step, we have to load. I like to load my backing first. So here's my backing. I've already pieced it. Um, it's just, uh, oh, another um, con of the red snappers. I can get away probably, if it's something I pieced myself, and I know that my quilt top is pretty square, I can usually get away with like maybe two inches all the way, two inches extra all the way around. So an extra four inches on the backing. Um, if I'm loading with the red snappers, I need at least four inches top and bottom extra. So eight total instead of just that two. So it's extra four inches um, because instead of pinning, if I were pinning this, you know, we're pinning and the edges are lined right up, we need overhang. So you need like a good maybe inch, inch and a half overhang that you can actually clamp on to sit into that. And you'll see it, I'll try to bring you up close whenever I do one of these. Um, so you need extra backing, especially the top and bottom, maybe not on the sides, but on the top and bottom, because those are what is getting clamped between the um, between the layers. So first step, for, and this is just like, this is the burrito method, this is just like how I do it the other way. I'm throwing my backing over the back bar. And what this is doing, is that it's keeping things taut. You can see that when I pull it, it doesn't pull really easy. And I wanna make sure that that um, leader is wrapped around this bar a little bit. I don't want it to be, um, I don't want this fabric right on the metal of the bar because it slides. I want that leader. That leader is giving me tension 
gravity is giving me tension and while I roll this up after it's loaded, it's gonna keep things nice and straight and taut for me. So I'm gonna pull it down a little bit because I want to make my table. And this is why I call it the burrito method because there's a lot of like, let's make a table so we can eat and like a lot of food references because I like to eat. So um, here's my piece. I'm coming, and this is the classic view from the um, handy quilter frames. I'm coming between the two bars. <laughs> and I'm wrapping back around. And this is what I call my table. It's a surface that if I were using pins, I could put pins on the table and pin across the leader. In this case, we're not using pins because we're gonna use the snappers. But um, just remember, we're making the table and then we're gonna load off the table. So now this first step is done. We just want this, we want it nice and taut. We want it to look like it's laying straight and hanging nice. Things look good. I've already pressed this. I've already, um, uh, what's the word? Made my side straight. I trimmed them up to make them straight. So now we wanna load this piece to the belly bar. So usually we would, I have my ratchets locked. So I'm gonna unlock that um, belly bar ratchet. Usually, if we're pinning, I'm throwing this over, lining everything up, and I'm pinning. But we're not pinning. We're using snappers. And I can't try to snap right here. There's nothing to kind of grab onto and hold that for me. So I'm actually leaving my ratchet locked. And I keep those ratchets locked any time I have to turn the, turn the wheel or turn the bar because it keeps you from turning it the wrong way. So I'm going to roll this all the way up. So now my leader's all the way ro rolled up on that belly bar and I want it to sit right on top. So you can see my bar here. I hope you can see my bar here. I know you can probably see it over here. So here's my bar coming across. So here's my bar in my leader. I'm gonna fold my top and lay it over that bar, eyeballing about an inch and a half. Now, if you're new to red snappers, you do have those little two inch pieces that you can kind of put one in the middle, one on the outsides, hold it while you're clamping everything. Once you get used to it, like I'm not touching anything and it's not falling. I've given myself enough room with my table that I can fold this back and this is still getting, um, is not falling in. So gravity is working with me as I roll it, but also not against me as I'm trying to get it loaded. So now I'm taking my clamps. I've already measured the backing and or measured it with uh, the clamps wise to see what how many I needed and what sizes. So, and how I do that is I just kind of lay it over the bar and this one wouldn't work. I'd still need some extra. So I'm gonna use one small one, one long one, and I'm gonna come and move the camera over here so you can see how I do this. All right, so I haven't touched anything. My bar is right here. I can kind of see it running through here. Now remember, um, we're gonna use one long one and one small one. I tend to start with the long ones and then do the small one second. Um, I want them both to overhang a little bit. So I'm gonna start this one here. I don't think you can see the overhang over there, but I have about six inches. And then the long one will go on this side. So um, when I do this, I put my hand around the whole bar and I squeeze it into place and I can go in and you can kind of hear it clamp as I clamp, a, clamp across. Sometimes I'll start here and then I'll go and hit do the, um, the end piece. Again, I'm wrapping my hand around the whole bar and squeezing. What I'm not doing is putting my hands on top and pushing. I don't want to bend these bars. So I can kind of come in, clamp it all down, and then I just do a little kind of run my finger over it to make sure it doesn't feel like any of those places aren't clamped. Now that one's done, I can do the second one. Now, um, like I said before, if you don't have the hand strength, now that fell down, but we're clamped. We're good, it's not gonna do anything, and I can just kind of hold this, uh, hold this if I needed to, if it started to slide, but because most of it's clamped, we're gonna be okay. Um, so yeah, so if you don't have the hand strength to kind of grab and squeeze, what you can do is put your, put your first little piece in, bend this back, 
and then just kind of push it down as you kind of roll that bend. And now this part is clamped too. So now I've loaded the belly bar and we're gonna go to the back. But um, we have to get the back ready for the burrito. You may not be able to see my face, but that is not what we're here for. We're here to see the quilt. So, um, so I want to, usually at this point, I would get my backing, make sure this was nice and taut, and then I would roll this up. And I wanna roll it up and give myself maybe six inches in the back. We can't actually see that. So um, we need to go and make our burrito and then we'll roll this up so we can see what's going on. So I'm gonna run around to the back of the machine. All right, so this is the reason I call it the burrito method. We're gonna make a burrito out of these back bars that allows us to load this from the back and have it be loaded correctly. So this is what we're thinking. I'm gonna unlock my ratchet from my back bar. And so the leader is gonna be our tortilla. The back bar is gonna be our beans because it's the back bar. And the idler bar is gonna be our cheese because it's the idler bar. I don't know, I, beans and back, you can remember. This is, so this is beans and cheese, okay? And we want to wrap our tortilla around our beans and cheese. So coming from the back and under, we're going under both bars, back around, and we're making, and that's how we make our burrito. I always run through and make sure everything's nice and taut. Now you can see what happens because this has that snapper in it. We have to get the whole snapper around there and it takes a little bit more maneuvering than if you were just uh, flipping up the leader itself. <clears throat> there we go. And now we have our perfectly made burrito and I probably have five or so inches, four or five inches of overhang in the back and that's perfect. Um, if you have a studio frame, so if you have an Amara or um, a Avante or a 16 on a frame and you have a super leader, which is the 27 inch leader, you're gonna have a ton of overhang back here. That's fine. Wrap it around, get it nice and taut, lock your ratchet, and then you can come in and kind of click it up to where you want it. And I like it in this, for this application when I'm using the red snappers, I give myself about three inches overhang in the back. So now I'm coming back to the front. You'll definitely get a nice little workout loading this way until you're good at it and then it just comes, it's second nature. So I'm folding this back over. And the reason I fold that over before I roll it is again, we want the tension from the leader, like um, the tension of the fabric running across that leader along with gravity pulling that fabric down in the back. And now I'm gonna roll. And I don't know if you can see this, Oh yeah, you can. So you can see the fabric down here. I want it to be about right there on the other side. So I'm going to roll it and eyeball it. And it's probably going to be somewhere around there. If I have to, I can come and distribute any of this extra. Now I'm going back to the back, but this time I want to take my snappers with me because I got to snap that back. All right. So I'm going to pull this nice and taut. I probably rolled it a little bit far, but that's okay because I have the uh, my back bar locked. So here's my leader, or here's my snapper, here's my edge. I really want the snapper about midpoint of that bar. So I'm gonna roll that bar up and I'll hold the top because then I'll have to pull it taut again. And probably three more, four more clicks, five more clicks, pull it taut again. And th some things to look at. You'll notice that I didn't mark a center or anything. Um, I tend not to do that when I'm using red snappers. 
Um, and really, I don't mark a center that much anymore because I how I load the top I know is or the first edge I know is straight because everything was hanging nice and straight when I loaded it. So now I can look and see how the swag is of my fabric. And if my swag is nice and straight, I know that the back uh, that the backing has been loaded straight. Um, if it looked like this, I would know that something's off and I need to fix it, which is I could shift it to make, make sure um, it got to the point where it looks straight. Um, you know, I can still kind of maneuver and manipulate it a little bit. Our bar, actually our bar's a little low. I'm gonna go two more clicks. That looks much better. Um, and the only reason I'm trying to get my, my bar right here is because I want to be able to grab and squeeze like we did before because I can't push that bar. Remember, I don't want to bend that bar. I have to grab and squeeze. So I have my two pieces. I'm going to kind of lay them out how I want them. And we'll do the long one this side this time and the short one this side. It doesn't matter. You can put them on any way you like. Get my line it up. I'm going to squeeze once here. Squeeze once here and then I can go through and squeeze that bar and push this um, snapper into place. That's all good. I still have to pop this last extra part. And now again, I'm going to use my smaller one on the left and squeeze. If I had to, I can bend back and work it onto that bar this way. <clears throat> and now I have my back loaded. So I can plop this down um, and we're going back to the front. All right, so our back our um, back bar is loaded, belly bar is loaded, and this is where I would roll this up. Nice and taut. I like mine to sit somewhat about right there. Um, you might see it, you know, you have this bar under, um, bar still in here. It hangs a little weird on the sides. That's okay. Um, the leaders in the front, I have these, these are, um, what, so tights? They're little magnets. And I put them on, um, let's see if you can see it down here, where you have your little extra overhang, because usually you're working in the middle of the quilt and then this kind of flops down. So to keep that stuff from flopping, I put them right on my leaders in the corners and it keeps everything on the bar really nice and tight as you're kind of rolling around. Um, the one thing to keep in mind is that when you get to the end and you're pulling this out, if that is still magnetic or um, that magnet is still on there, it doesn't like let it out. And then it, sometimes they actually pop off and then I have to go searching. But um, they're called so so tights and the, I use the long rectangles. They have a few different sizes. But um, all right, so our backing is on. Yes, now it's time to do our top. And I should have looked which way I wanted this top to be. So again, top, right side up. I'm tossing it over my bar. And I'm just eyeballing the center on my backing. I'm gonna pull it taut let it go and now I'm using the table which is my backing if I were using pins this is nice I could um, let out my um, top leader lay it right flat drop my pins pin across but we're not using pins so I have my top bar um, locked I'm gonna put my so tight over here my top bar ratchet is down it's locked so if I turn you can hear the click and again I always have them locked anytime I'm turning a bar so I know that I'm turning the bar the correct direction. I want this to be about in the top center. The one thing you have to work, uh, be careful, which it, I mean, it's not gonna, the end of the world. If you go too far, say I went to here, that's just gonna fall forward and then we just have to rewrap around. So if you're gonna um, do this, you know, you can cheat towards yourself rather than cheat towards the other side for that to fall over. There we go. And now I can just fold this back. I'm looking for about that inch, inch and a half. 
straight across. And I didn't grab my pieces. And one long one is going to be sufficient to um, get this uh, dream big on. So I'm just going to use one long one. And in this case, I slide my hand between the um, backing and the bar because, again, I want to squeeze the bar. I don't want to push down. If I had to, I could bend this back and load it this way. Oops. Oop, my sew tie is not on here. So now the top is loaded. That was easy and I'm not bleeding. I can pull this tight. And just roll it up. And when I when I'm loading a machine, I will roll it until this falls right over that back and stop because then I'm going to do my basting and do all of that stuff. Um, I have another video for that. So let's talk about bulk. If you look here, you can see all of that extra bulk. I mean, it goes this much taller. So it goes about an inch higher than the bar. So I have an, an extra bulk here. I also have extra bulk here on the backing. I have, or on the belly bar, I'm gonna have extra bulk on the backing bar. So you have to manage this bulk as you're quilting and just be aware that this is here because as you roll it, so as I'm rolling, when I'm rolling here, it's getting really tight. And I think you can probably see how it's pushing that backing down here. So you really don't wanna stop with that bulk facing down on, with this, on this part. You want it anywhere, uh, point it anywhere else. You're okay. This one, um, let me unlock that back. You can see that lip right here. There's the bulk from the bar. So now they're both pointing up. So it's just one thing to keep in mind that there is going to be extra bulk in places and you have to make sure you're aware of that. Um, Things where it will get tight when you're advancing and you're using your hand wheel to um, pull the back. When these two meet in the middle, it gets really tight. So just be aware if it starts to get hard, don't hold that handle and just push. Just grab the bar. And um, sometimes I grab the bar and I pull it. Or other times I will actually, with my hands, loosen these two and then start advancing again. Because every time these come together, it's going to give you a little bit of... Uh, hang up, I guess. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, I'm unlocking these two ratchets because I want to pull this towards the uh, back bar. So if you look at the idler bar and see where this snapper is, I'll push that back so we can actually see. That's about as close to that bar as this um, snapper can be at this position. If I go any farther back, the snapper and the bar are gonna be too close together. It's gonna become too tight. And if I try to get my machine back there, the machine's gonna push the snapper up where it is and it's not gonna fit. So if my machine is here, I'm not gonna be able to, like it's gonna, you can see the idler bar. See how it's lifting up? Because it's trying to squish all of this through that little space. I, and it will do it. I mean, I can come through and pop it through. But if I were trying to quilt right there and move that machine, it's going to be way too tight. It's not going to be a nice experience. So when I, when I roll this, I make sure that it's here or it's here. And I don't, I don't want it anywhere near this bar because it's just one more thing that the machine can get hung up on. And also, when I'm rolling this back bar, because I have the bulk, which we can see here, this extra bulk popping out, I don't want this extra bulk facing towards me because then I'm losing an extra inch of space. So what that looks like, like that, we don't want this because now the machine's gonna hit that 
and you're losing space. So see where I can, this is where my machine is stopping. It's hitting that, it's hitting this bulk. And I'm gonna pull it out a little bit more. If it were here, I get another inch, inch and a half. So those are things to keep in mind if you're using red snappers. Um, now, now that being said, don't not use them because you're like, oh my gosh, now I'm scared because there's other things I have to think about. Look how fast that was to load this. I mean, no pinning, no blood, super easy, super fast, but you just have a few other things to be aware of while you're using them. There's not a, you know, you know it's not a problem. And honestly, every once in a while, I don't pay attention and I'm like, oh, you know, I'll stop this in the wrong spot and be like, oh, you know, better than that. I mean, it happens. It's okay. I'm going to roll that back down. So did you hear that? That was it kind of getting around that bar with that bulk. <clears throat> so that is, uh-oh. Let's fix this. I still have to um, load up my batting and everything. And everything else is the same. Pop my bars up, put my batting in. I would st stitch my basting line. And again, I have another video for that. But um, that is loading the burrito method with the red snappers. I hope it helps you out, gives you some ideas of um, how I do it. Um, again, hundred way, different ways to do it. This is just the way I like to do it. I know some people who will lay the fabric down on their table and then have their table to push down on because they can push on that table. It's not going to mess anything up. Um, this is just the way that I found that works really good for me. And it's just like, it's kind of interchangeable if I'm doing the um, pinning method or if I'm doing the red snappers. And like I said, I leave the snappers in the sleeves the whole time because there's extra room and I can come in here and slide that out of the way and still pin at the edge if I need to. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm doing something super fun that will be that this dream big will actually be in another video. So um, make sure you hit that. Uh, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and you hit that bell icon so you get notified when the videos drop. But um, the Dream Big will be getting quilted and I will have a video with that that's different from the other Dream Big series I did. Let's see, I'm just loading up my, fat, my batting. Um, <clears throat> go follow me on social media, Adam So Fun, Facebook and Instagram. Um, if you have questions, you know how to reach me because it's Adam So Fun everywhere. Adam So Fun at Gmail. Send me an email if you have questions. Um, I try to get back to them as soon as I can. Check out adamsofun.com where I post um, if I'm doing any classes. So if you're interested in a class, you can go there. Right now we're doing a lot of virtual stuff. So I do have some classes coming out. Or uh, I'm doing some classes in December. So make sure you check out that page so if you're interested in learning some free motion rulers i have to think of what everything i'm doing it's all there so um adamsofun.com and um yeah we'll see you next time i hope you have a wonderful holiday or had a wonderful holiday and we'll see you soon bye everybody